Minority Whip Congressman Steny Hoyer. Sir, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Tamron. Good to be with you. Good to have you with us. Do you believe that Senator Warren is auditioning for the VP spot? I don't know whether she's auditioning. She's certainly qualified to be Vice President of the United States, and uh, I agree with her and her, her assertion. Uh, but I think that there are a number of very, very good candidates. Uh, uh, Sherrod Brown, Tom Perez, Tim Kaine, just to name a few, Joaquin Castro. Uh, there are a lot of good people out there, but there's no doubt that uh, Elizabeth Warren uh, does energize a, a large number of Americans because she's focused, as Hillary Clinton is focused, uh, on making sure that they, they are lifted up. Up, and that they get a, a piece of the rock, if you will, and that they make it in our country. So uh, uh, she certainly, I think, on, uh, I'm sure, on the list. Well, you know, we have a list, as you mentioned, the names that have been floated out to Sherrod Brown, which you've pointed out, Julian Castro, Tim Kaine. But when you talk about energizing a certain segment of uh, Democrats that, that may be still questioning whether they are ready to support Hillary Clinton, uh, that includes a great number of progressives who support Bernie Sanders. Doesn't uh, Elizabeth Warren fill that vacuum? I, th I certainly think she does, uh, but uh, let's be clear. Bernie Sanders said yesterday after meeting with the president he was going to spend his full time and every effort making sure Donald Trump doesn't become president. Elizabeth Warren has enthusiastically endorsed uh, Hillary Clinton and said the same thing, that she believes that uh, Donald Trump is uh, unqualified to be president of the United States and indeed would be harmful to the United States. So uh, I think both of them are going to be energizing whether uh, Elizabeth uh, Warren, uh, Senator Warren, is a vice presidential candidate or not. I think both of them are going to be energizing uh, those people who uh, feel very strongly about both of them to vote for Hillary Clinton as the best uh, alternative, and not only the best alternative, but is absolutely qualified to be president of the United States and be constructive uh, in building a better America. Can you, with confidence this morning, even with Bernie Sanders uh, still in the race, not suspending his campaign, can you, with confidence, say that you have a unified Democratic Party? Well, I think so. Uh, I can say it with confidence and conviction, and I think it's accurate. Uh, and that's why you see, uh, the President of the United States has endorsed uh, uh, Secretary Clinton. Now that she has the votes clearly to be nominated, uh, Elizabeth Warren also made that determination and has endorsed her. And again, uh, I think Bernie Sanders, Senator Sanders, has uh, uh, made an extraordinary run. I think he's energized a lot of people. He's uh, brought in a lot of enthusiasm and younger people uh, into the process. Uh, but his major objective is making sure Trump doesn't become president of the United States. And the way he's going to do that, in my opinion, uh, uh, I'm sure, is work very hard to make sure that Hillary Clinton is, in fact, elected president of the United States. So I think we have a unified party. And in fact, I think we've had a unified party with uh, the same objectives in mind, uh, maybe some uh, different means and, and some uh, more cautious, less cautious, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there is no doubt that the basic fundamentals uh, between uh, uh, Senator Sanders and Secretary Clinton were the same. Uh, they believe government can be, should be, and is a positive effort to make the lives of average working Americans better. And that's what they're dedicated to. So I think, uh, unlike the Republican uh, primary, where there was, among the 17, very, very deep philosophical, ideological uh, differences, that was uh, never the case in our party. And I think we are unified. I can say that, Tamron, I think with great confidence. Let me ask you about Speaker uh, Ryan, House Speaker Ryan. He was on uh, Good Morning America. He also spoke with my colleague Andrew Mitchell and he was asked two times how is it that he can support the GOP presumptive nominee and also say that language he used directed at a federal judge was textbook racism just this morning he described it as being politically incorrect to um, label someone based on race or ethnicity uh, that it was just the wrong thing to say and yet he continues to support Donald Trump who this morning tweeted out um, referring to Senator Warren as Pocahontas uh, referring back to what she says is her background how does he juggle both can you say something is racist and still support that nominee I don't see how you can do that uh, I think Lindsey Graham has it right uh, they ought not to have the disdain that they hold for Hillary Clinton be more than the love they have for country. Uh, I think uh, Paul Ryan was correct uh, when he uh, said that what uh, uh, Trump said was not politically incorrect, 
it was racist. It was wrong. It was uh, contrary to the values of our country. Uh, and supporting somebody who holds those kinds of values and says those kinds of things, I think, is antithetical to the best interests of our country. And I would hope that uh, uh, many of the Republican leaders, uh, like George Wills, had a very, very tough column in saying that if you have principle and if you love your country, uh, being for Trump is uh, antithetical and contradictory to that uh, uh, that effort. And uh, I think Lindsey Graham essentially said uh, the same thing. Uh, this is this is this is an election which I think is going to call for uh, all of us to think of country first, not party. Let me ask you again: Could you have ever imagined that? We are discussing not only the Senate but the House as the result of Donald Trump being the GOP nominee, that he could essentially shake the political earth for Republicans even in the House. I think we may well have a wave election. You're correct, Tamron. Uh, clearly, the Senate, I, I think the Senate's been in play for a very long period of time. I think we're going to take back the Senate. But I think most of the uh, political sagacity was that the, the hill was too, too steep uh, for Democrats to take back the House. But I think uh, Donald Trump is going to put uh, literally scores of seats in play that would not otherwise have been in play because people will determine, uh, particularly when uh, leaders of the Republican Party are supporting uh, Donald Trump, that this is not a party that they want to trust their country to uh, and are going to therefore vote for Democrats. And I think uh, under those circumstances, we have a, an opportunity to take back uh, uh, majority control of the House of Representatives. House Minority Whip Congressman Steny Hoard, sir, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Dan. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.